Oh, we will praise you, Lord. Amuli ka namin sasambahin at dadakilain sa oras na ito at papupurihan ng iyong dakilang pangalan sa aming mga buhay. Oh, I just came to praise the Lord. We just came here, Lord, to praise your name, to magnify your name, Lord, and to, to continue to honor your mighty name, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just came to praise the
Sige po, tayo pong lahat ay yumuko at tayo ay manalangin. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa araw at oras na to, o Diyos, dahil binigyan mo muli kami ng pagkakataon upang purihin ka, sambahin ka, pasalamatan ka sa aming buhay, Panginoon. Salamat po sa buhay na pinahiram mo sa araw na to, na ang buhay na to, Panginoon, ay patuloy na mag-ilaw, magningning, Panginoon, na ikaw lang ang makita sa buhay ng bawat isa sa amin. Salamat sa katagumpayan, Panginoon. Kasalamat sa kasaganaan. Salamat sa kaligtasan. Salamat, Panginoon, dahil pinagaling mo kami, Panginoon, pinasagana mo kami, Panginoon, dahil ikaw po ay nagbibigay ng buhay, pag-asa sa amin, O Lord God. Salamat po dahil, Panginoon, Uh, ikaw po, Panginoon, ang tumutugon sa lahat naming pangangailangan. Dalhin mo ang maraming kaluluwa sa lugar na to Panginoon, upang patuloy na sambahin ka, purihin ka, at pasalamatan ka, O Diyos. Lord, patuloy na, O God, na uh, ikaw po, Panginoon, ang masunod sa aming buhay. Ipaglingkod namin ang buhay sa iyo, Panginoon. Patuloy ka naming pakamahalin, ibigin, Panginoon. Hanggang sa huling hiningan ng aming buhay. Salamat po, o Lord, sa araw na to Panginoon. Punong-puno kami ng kagalakan. Punong-puno kami, Panginoon, ng iyong pag-ibig. At punong-puno ng pagtitiwala sa iyo. Lord, pangunahan mo lahat ng dara ko dito, Panginoon, at ang tagapagturo, o Diyos, sa kanyang buhay, patuloy, o God, ng katalinuhan nagmumula sa iyo, Panginoon, ay ibigay mo sa kanya. Salamat po, Panginoon. Patuloy ka naming tinupuri at sinasamba at pinapasalamatan sa oras na to. Sa pangalan ni Jesus at ang lahat ng Kristiyan ang sabi ng Amen. Thank you. Amen. Sige nga po muna isang malakas sa palakpak sa ating Panginoong Diyos sa buhay. Hallelujah! At muli sa oras na ito, patuloy nating pararangalan at dakilain ng ating Panginoon. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Hallelujah! Blessed be your name. Abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name And I found in the desert place The walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your
His name on high. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Patuloy po tayong sumumba at patuloy po natin dakilain, itaas at parangalan ng pangalan ng Diyos. Hallelujah. Good. 
me before I call.
Amen. A blessed Sunday afternoon to everyone here and to all the brethren who are watching the live stream in their uh, own respective countries. Kayo po na nasa ibang bansa, mga kapatiran, dyan po sa Canada, dyan po sa United Arab Emirates, sa Qatar, Kuwait, Australia, United States of America, and to all the nations of the world. We come to you in the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, uh, tayo po ay uh, muling biniyayaan ng uh, oras para po natin purihin, sambahin, at luwalhatiin ang ating Panginoon. We are given that privilege to be able to worship the Lord, praise the Lord, and bless His holy name. So, uh, kayo po ba'y excited sa bagong katuroan na ipa, ibabahagi po ng ating Panginoon? Are you excited for uh, another teaching, another revelation, another uh, message that the Lord is uh, wanting us to hear today? Alright. Actually, hindi po ito bago, bagong luma. <laughs> Sapagkat uh, I have preached and taught 
upon this message for a number of times. But if you will ask me, I can preach on this topic all day. <laughs> I can preach on this topic anytime, any day, because I love this uh, message. I love this topic. And uh, our verse or message for today is taken from the book of Matthew. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, can you please open your Bibles in the book of Matthew? All right. So I know that uh, you might have an idea what this message or topic would be. And that is the end times or the last days. All right. So our verses uh, are taken from Matthew 24 until uh, 36. So do you believe that we are living in the last days? Yes. Mm. Do you believe that we are in the end times? Yes. Amen. So in Matthew 24, the Lord has enumerated all the events that will transpire in the last days. And uh, this is called the Olivet Discourse because it was delivered in Mount Olives in Jerusalem. Ito po ay uh, binahagi ng Panginoon sa kanyang mga alagad doon po sa Mount Olives. At uh, kanya pong tinakal ang mga kaganapan sa huling kapanahunan. The last days have been um, discussed by the Lord, has been enumerated, the signs of the last days, the signs of the times. But um, you might be able to tell me that you are always teaching about the last days. But that topic has already been discussed all over and over again in the last 2,000 years. Okay, The last days has been talked about all over and over again in the last 2,000 years. Because the last days actually started in Acts chapter 2. Okay, at the day of Pentecost, when the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, resurrected, and ascended into heaven, he left the disciples. And in Acts chapter 2, while they were celebrating the Pentecost, the first of the Bible prophecies has been fulfilled as Explicitly stated in Joel chapter 2, 28 to 32. Na kung saan sinabi po doon, in the last days, you know, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. At dito po sa Acts chapter 2, makikita po natin ang kaganapan na kung saan during the Pentecost, the Jewish and the apostles were celebrating the festival called Shavuot or Harvest Festival. The Holy Spirit came upon them. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spoke in new tongues. So that the people there were amazed and mesmerized. Like, what, are, what is happening? Anong nangyayari? Why are these people drunk at a very early time in the morning? Akala po nila lasing sila sapagkat sila po ay uh, nagsasalita ng ibang wika. Sila po ay sabi ng mga tao, di ba mga Galileo ito? Bakit ibang mga wika ang kanilang uh, pinagsasabi? So people who were passing by thought that they were drunk, but Apostle Peter stood among them and told the crowd that the apostles were not drunk, but they were full of the Holy Spirit. And this is the first of the Bible prophecies that has been fulfilled. Now, people who are skeptics, that means they doubt it. They doubt the, 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 the reality and the fact of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the last days. You know, they will always doubt it. But I tell you, the Bible is a prophetic book. It is not just an ordinary book. Aside from it is a historical book because it, you know, it, uh, it gives us the history of the, of the Jewish people. But the Bible, more than it is a history book or a historical book, contains various topics. Actually, the Bible starts with the creation of the world in the book of Genesis and ends in the end of the world in the book of Revelation. No other Bible or no other book in the world in your library 
has that kind of, you know, very wide coverage of topic mula sa simula hanggang sa katapusan. The Bible covers it all. In the, you know, in the secular world, there are so many theories about the origins of the world. Merong Big Bang Theory. Nagsimula raw tayo sa, sa isang uh, black hole. Or meron po tayong tinatawag na mga Darwinian Theory. Nagsimula daw tayo sa, sa, sa mga uh, primates, mga mammal, sa mga, sa mga unggoy. Doon daw tayo nagsimula at nagkaroon tayo ng evolution hanggang tayo ay naging mga ganito ang itsura. Alright? Those are the different theories of creation or the origins of the earth. But if you read the, Gen- the book of Genesis, hindi mo na kaya na kailangan ng napakaraming theory para hulaan kung paano tayo nagsimula. Sapagkat ang book of Genesis ay sinasabi kung saan tayo nagsimula. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the word was God. Amen? So ang Panginoon po ang uh, nag... Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Ang Panginoon po ang lumalang ng lahat ng bagay. So you will see the origins of the earth, but... Wala na pong ibang book ang nagtatakel kung paano mag end ang mundo. Kung paano magtatapos ang mundo. Biblia lang po. It is the Bible. And so, if you are somebody who is a scholar, if you are somebody who loves to read, if you are somebody who has thousands of collections of books in your library, but you do not have the Bible in your collection of books in your library, you are the most pitiful thing because you are missing on a lot of things. Amen? Namimiss mo ang maraming bagay patungkol sa mga kaganapan at magaganap. Pero we are so blessed and privileged because these things were not kept as a secret to us. In fact, it has been revealed to us. Amen? Ang Panginoon po ay ipina, ipinaalam sa atin ang mga bagay na ito. So that when the things will happen, these things will happen, we will not be caught by surprise. But the Lord has explicitly enumerated all the last day's events so that we will be very, very much ready when these things happen. Amen? Hindi po tayo masusurpresa, hindi po tayo mabubulaga, bagus tayo po ay magiging handang-handa. Kaya nga po sabi ko sa inyo, Matthew 24, mula nung naging kristyano ako at naging tagapagturo, ilang beses ko na itong tinuro, but I will always teach on this, I will always teach on this because I know the relevance and the importance of this. Ito po ay, uh, sabi ko nga sa inyo, I can teach on this all day, anytime, any day. Amen? I will always teach on this because... I, I believe that it is what we need, you know. The urgency of being prepared for the last days is very imminent. Nandito na po yung mga uh, hinihintay natin. So, uh, ang, kung may pa po kayong mga Bible, I pray that you will get one and uh, start to read, you know. Ngayon, dati sinasabi ko, magsimula kayo sa John, sa book of John. Kasi, hindi baka hindi niyo pa maunawaan. Pero ngayon, pag ako'y tinanong nyo, saan kayo magsisimula? Magsimula kayo sa book of Matthew chapter 24. <laughs> Amen? Sapagkat ito na po yung mga kaganapan. So, so, in between the creation and the end of the world in the book of Revelation, we are living in that time space. Nandito tayo ngayon. But, as I always said, tayo po ay uh, palapit na ng palapit. Palapit na po ng palapit sa mga tanda, sa mga signos, sa mga signs of the times and uh, not many people even the brightest of minds do not know these truths but blessed are we who are simple minded because this has been revealed to us okay through the bible and we are the only people in the world who know what will happen in the last days we are the only people who know what will happen in the last days. And God wants us to know these things, these spiritual truths, not to satisfy our curiosity. Just like when the, the disciples asked the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, doon po sa mga unang verses, ang sabi nila, ha, when will these things happen? When will these things come? Sabi ng mga disciples. But the Lord answered them in a very straightforward manner, not in a manner of parables. Or, or, or metaphors, kundi diretsahan po ang sagot ng Panginoon sa kanila nung sila po ay uh, 
tinanong ng mga ng alagad. So the Lord Jesus Christ has uh, has made a straightforward answer to the disciples. So una balikan mo na natin yung sinasabi ko kanina. Ang ang Bible is a historical book, but it's not only a historical book, but it is also a prophetic book. All right? Ang ang Bible po ay punung puno ng mga predictions. Punong-puno po ng mga prophecies. Prophecies are predictions that have not yet happened or have already happened. Depende po kung ano yung prophecy yun. Kagaya ng Joel 2, 28. Prophesied by the prophet Joel in the Old Testament, nagkaroon ng katuparan sa Acts chapter 2 in the New Testament. And the Bible has more or less 735 prophecies or predictions. 735 prophecies about the future and around 596 of those prophecies and predictions have already come to pass nangyari na naganap na yung 596 na mga predictions na yon one of which is the pentecost in acts chapter 2 now 735 minus 596 ilan pa yung natitira Alright, so 81% have already come through and 19% remain to be fulfilled. And that 19%, I tell you, beloved, is going to happen. Just like the other 81%. Amen? Yung 81% naganap na, yung 19% magaganap pa lang. And I tell you, magaganap at magaganap yun. And most of these remaining predictions or prophecies that have remained to be fulfilled are the ones that are concerning the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the second coming of Christ. At uh, yun po yung uh, ating pag-aaralan ngayon. Alright? So, uh, all of these remaining prophecies or predictions have been given to us so that the Lord has commanded in Matthew 26, 41, you will watch and pray. Itong mga prophecies na ito ay binigay sa atin ng Panginoon para ating bantayan at ipanalangin. Watch and pray. Matthew 26:41. What are we going to watch? Ano yung ating uh, titingnan? Ano yung ating babantayan? What do we watch? Because we are the watchmen of Christ. The things that are happening around us. Okay? Kung dati wala tayo apathetic tayo, wala tayong pakialam sa mga nangyayari sa paligid natin, ngayon po this is the right time. For us na makialam, magkaroon ng pakialam, magkaroon po ng interes sa mga nagaganap. Sapagat ang mga nangyayari at nagaganap ay may kinalaman sa mga huling kapanahon ng kaganapan bago dumating ang Panginoong Yeso Kristo. So, Matthew 24 talks about the last days. And for the last 2,000 years, pwedeng sabihin mo na we have been living in the last days, Okay. Marami pong nagsasabing, marami nang nagpipreach about the last days, pero hanggang ngayon, di pa rin naman nagaganap at nangyayari. But, let us go back to Matthew 24, to 36, when Jesus Christ was asked by the apostles, what are the signs, or when will these things happen? And Jesus was so forthright in sharing what the future holds for us. He gave us the signs of the last days, so that we will be Prepared. So, magsimula po tayo sa verse, uh, Matthew 24, verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another, but everyone will be thrown down. The Lord is prophesying about the building, the beautiful temple. At nangyari po at naganap yan in 70 AD when the Solomon's Temple, the second temple uh, of in Jerusalem was raised to the ground by, by the Romans. Ito po ay nangyari at naganap na wala po ang bawat stone on the temple and it was raised to the ground. Now, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him and said, Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Dalawang bagay ang tinanong ng mga alagad na malinaw. Ano ang mga tanda 
ng iyong pagbabalik at ano ano ang mga okay what will be the sign of your coming and, and the end of the age okay yung pagdating ng Panginoon at ang mga kaganapan sa huling kapanahunan and the Lord Jesus Christ answered Watch out that no one deceives you for many will come in my name claiming that I am the Messiah and I will deceive many all right yun po ang unang sinabi ng Panginoon isa sa mga tanda bago siya dumating maraming lalabas na magkaklaim na sila ang Messiah, sila ang Son of God. Meron yan sa Dabao. Sinabi niya, siya ang Son of God. Okay, na-feature pa yan sa ABC ng uh, isang famous network sa Amerika. Tatlo sila na nagkaklaim sa marami, pero tatlo silang na-feature. At isa, Pilipino, taga Dabao. Sabi niya, I am the Son of God. I am the Messiah. Ako na, ang anak ng Diyos. Amen. So, one, talagang malapit na dumating ang Lord, di ba? Kasi meron ng mga nagkiklaim, kahit sa Pilipinas, meron ng umaangkin na siya ang Son of God. So, one of those signs is that many will claim that they will be the Messiah, alright? So, marami na po ang gumagawa niyan. Ngayon, ikakategorize natin itong mga signs na ito. Sa verses 4 and 5, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and uh, they will deceive many. Sa verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed because such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So, ang una pong kategory ng mga signs na tinutukoy ng Panginoon ay ang mga disasters na magaganap sa mundo. The disasters that will happen in the world, mostly man-made disasters, like wars. All right? Now, you tell me, in the last 2,000 years, there have been a lot of wars that have been waged by people, by nations, by kingdoms. But the thing is, in the last days, the intensity... The frequency and the dangers that it will pose will be escalated. Tataas, magle-level up yung intensity ng mga wars na ito. Which is very, very viable. Why? Because of technology. Dati, ang mga, ang mga weaponries ay mga sibat, mga sword, di ba? mga gulok mga itak, ganun noon. But nowadays, you know, there is this nuclear power that, you know, isang push button lang, you can erase a whole human race because of these nuclear weapons. Amen? So, may kita natin yung gravity, yung magnitude, yung intensity, mas nakakatakot. Amen? Kumpara nung unang mga panahon, doon ang mga nagre-revolusyon, itak lang eh, nakasakay sa mga kabayo. Pero ngayon, nakasakay sa mga tanke, merong mga drones, unmanned, walang mga tao, pero pinapabagsak ang mga buildings. That's how, how, how vi- more violent and more dangerous and, you know, the magnitude of these kinds of wars that are being rage, waged in our time is awesome, anyway, so to speak. Sapagkat, Grabe po yung yung advancement ng technology. All right? So sa mga panahong pong ito, sabi doon sa verse 6 and 7, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars which is already happening. In fact, uh, yung yung recent escalation of violence sa Middle East is as I was saying a dry run or a dress rehearsal for what is to come. Parang sabi ko, Lord, ito na ba yung kasi ang Russia gusto na ring makialam. Ang Turkey gustong makialam. Because Ezekiel 38 to 39 is Gog and Magog. Gog from the north. And there is no other nation from the north that will attack Israel. Kung titignan mo sa mapa, Russia lang yon. So in the last days, he is Gog of Magog. The land. Gog from the north. Amen? Siya po ang aatake sa Israel. Aatakihin po ng, ng, ng Gog from Magog, from the north, which is Russia, in, in, in these modern times, ang, ang Israel. At uh, 
makikita po natin, ang, ang Russia po is becoming once again a superpower after the Cold War. Sapagkat after po ng uh, bumagsak ang USSR, kala natin wala na sila. Pero ngayon, they are bouncing back. Sila po ay uh, muling uh, umeentra sa eksena. So, nations will rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom. That is one. And number two, sa 7b, verse 7b, sabi doon, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. So, wars, famines, and earthquakes. Ngayon, sinasabi natin, nangyari na yan at patuloy na nangyayari in the last 2,000 years. And again, I say, the intensity will be greater. The frequency will be greater. The magnitude and the dangers and the loss of lives that it will cause will be unprecedented because it will be an earthquake that will shake, you know, the, the, the many places na kung saan ang uh, casualties ay, ay, ay grabe, not only by the hundreds, but by the thousands maybe, or by the millions. The, the loss and the class casualties that this disasters, okay, the first category that the Lord has uh, mentioned are disasters in the world, wars, famines, and earthquakes. So, nakikita nyo ba yung, uh, yung mga earthquakes na, na nagaganap ngayon? In, in 2011, sa Japan, that tsunami that, that rocked Japan was so scary. Di po ba? Grabe po yung, yung andaming namatay, anda, andaming namatay, and, and they ran for their lives, and and they were nev never able. And in the last days, again, I, I say, because the Lord has said it Himself, that there will be more famines and there will be more earthquakes in various places. But this is not to scare us. Because the Lord has said, don't panic. Because in verse 8, the Lord says, all these are the beginnings of birth pains. This has to happen. Sapagkat ito ay simula ng uh, labor pains ng isang nanganganak. Tayong mga babae na ranasan natin ito, di ba? The labor pains that we experience is not to, to let us die. It's not to cause us to die. But the labor pain that we experience is something that we have to go through so that a new beginning, a new beautiful something will come out of those labor pains. At ano yun? Yung mga naging anak natin, di ba? Grabe, ako, 8 to 10 hours akong naglabor. Ikaw, Ate Merce, ano yung pinakamahabang uh, labor pain na naranasan mo? 24 hours. 24 hours din. Ikaw, ikaw po, sa dalawang baby mo? Um, sa una, hindi po masyado. Yung pangalawa, medyo doon ako nasaktan. Nasaktan. Ilang oras? Seven hours. One hour nga lang, parang umamatay na ako nun eh. <laughs> Kayo na ay? Five hours. Five hours. Alright. So, all of us share the same experience. Ikaw, Del. Des? 24 hours. 24 hours. So, unbeatable. Hindi ko pa naranasan yung 24 hours. Pero grabe, I cannot imagine. 24 hours. Pero yung iba nga, days eh. Days of labor before the, the birth. Di ba? But, what am I saying? All of us share the same experience. We go through the birth pains. But that is not the end, right? Yun ang sinasabi ng Lord. The birth pains are something that you have to go through so that something new could begin. Amen. Something beautiful could be birthed out. So, ito pong mga labor pains na nagaganap ngayon natin is not the birth pains for death, but for the beginning of new something, you know, sa isang bagong pasimula. At uh, kung ikaw ay nasa Lord, ganito ang iyong pananaw. If you are in the Lord, if you know these revelations, if you have put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, this is something that you actually rejoice with when you see these things happening. Because you know that the Lord draweth nigh. The Lord's coming is draweth nigh. So, sa buhay po natin, mga Kristiyano, we are so blessed and privileged because this revelation has been given to us so that when all these scary things that are happening, wars and famines and earthquakes, these disasters 
will come into this world, this will not scare us. But, you know, ironically, this will cause us to rejoice. Amen? Hindi po natin ito ikakatakot, kundi ito po ang magiging dahilan para po tayo ay maghanda sapagat alam natin ang mga bagay na ito ay tanda na malapit nang dumating ang Panginoon. So, if you are if you are going through a very difficult struggle, you are going through a very difficult problem that you seem like you want to give up. If you see these things happening instead of being depressed, instead of being scared, instead of being overcome by fear, you see it in the perspective of eternity and in the perspective of Matthew 24. These are now the beginnings of birth pains. These are just the beginning of birth pains. And it does not scare you. It, is, it does not oppress or stress you. It does not scare you, but it will give you that hope, blessed hope and joy. Di ba? Iba eh. Iba. Ibang, ibang mga kristyano, kapag merong mga pangit na, na nangyayari, nakikita nila ito sa perspektibo ng salita ng Diyos at sa kapahayagan ng Diyos sa halip na matakot, sa halip na sumuko, sa halip na ma-stress at uh, ma-paralyze at hindi na kumilos gumalaw, ito po ang nagsisilbing pag-asa, blessed hope, that totoo ang Biblia, totoo ang sinasabi ng Biblia. Yung mga propesiya ay nagaganap, yung mga predictions ay nagaganap. And so these birth pains are something that we have to go through So that we will be able, you know, to look forward to something new. Okay? Para sa atin yun. Pero sa kanila na wala ang Diyos sa puso, sila po ay magugupo ng takot, magugupo ng kawalan ng pag-asa, magugupo ng kadiliman, magugupo ng gusto na nilang mamatay. We will be going through that later on. Alright? So, that is the first category of signs that the Lord has given, disasters in the world. Now, if we will continue Matthew 24, we, the second category that the Lord has given us as a sign of the last days is the church. Okay? So, the world will have wars, famines, earthquakes, plagues, kasama po dyan, kagaya ng, mga, ng, ng virus na naranasan natin ngayon. Plagues, okay? Plagues po ay uh, mga salot. Okay? Mga salot, inexplainable Uh, viruses and, and diseases and sicknesses that are coming out of nowhere. So, ito po yung verse 9. Okay? Sabi po doon, Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. So, after the signs with the world, wars, famines, plagues, and uh, earthquakes, which are the disasters that will beset the world, ay pumunta po ang Panginoon sa church mismo. Ano rin po ang mangyayari sa church? You will be persecuted. The church, the true Christians, the true churches will be persecuted. It is one of the signs that the Lord has enumerated. So, get ready. The Lord is saying this so that we will get ready. That when persecution comes, hindi po tayo magbabalat si buyas. Bagkus ito po ay inaasahan natin. Sapagkat ito'y dapat mangyari at maganap. Sapagkat ito'y isang sa mga tanda na inilatag ng Panginoon. Persecution. We will be persecuted. Christians will become misfits in the world. Because we have different values. We have different beliefs. We have different You know, meron tayong paniniwala na pinaninindigan natin na hindi mag-fit in sa mundo. And so we will become misfits. And so because of that, we will be persecuted. Because hindi natin naayunan ang paraan ng mundo. The world will increase in wickedness. And in this increase in wickedness, we will not compromise with it. Hindi natin ito aayunan. Hindi natin aayunan ng same-sex marriages. Hindi natin aayunan ng divorce because it violates the laws of God. It violates the, the word of God. And so, because of that, we will be regarded as misfits. And because of that, we will be persecuted. Ang KJ nyo, mga Kristiyano. 
nagbabago ang mundo, nag evolve Kinakailangan sumayaw ka. Kinakailangan lumangoy ka, sumama ka. Noong unang panahon, kasi manang-manang panahon, walang divorce. Pero ngayon pwede na ang divorce. Noong unang panahon, bawal ang magpakasal ang lalaki sa lalaki o babae sa babae. Pero bago na ngayon ang mundo. Naging modern na, naging progressive na. So we have to accept change. And so we allow same-sex marriages. We allow abortion. We allow immoral acts that are abominable you know, in the laws of God. But we Christians will stand up to the truth and because of that, we will be persecuted by all the nations. Amen? Why? Because John 15, 19 says, If you belong to the world, it would, be, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Napakalinaw po, di ba? John 15, 19. The world will hate us because we do not belong to the world. Why? Because our citizenship is in heaven. Amen? Amen. Tayo po ay, uh, ang ating citizenship ay sa langit. Kaya alam po, ang affairs of this world, ang mga paraan ng mundo, hindi po natin kailanman aayunan. At dahil doon, tayo po ay kamumuhian. Tayo po ay, uh, we will be persecuted. Alright, so when that time comes, please do not be surprised. And please, wag po tayong magbalat si Buyas. Bagkos ito po ay ating yakapin at ito po ay ating pasalamatan. If you are persecuted, that means you are a true Christian. If you are not persecuted, you ask yourself, you might not be a true Christian. Baka ikaw ay fake because you are not persecuted. That means you are dancing with the world. You are... You are compromising with the world because you are not persecuted because true Christians ang totoong marka ng mga totoong Kristiyano po ay persecuted Amen? Tayo po ay ipapersecute So if we are experiencing persecution right now then you are a Christian The mark of being a true Christian is on you Amen? Pag hindi po tayo napapersecute tanungin po natin ang sarili natin Baka hindi po tayo totoong Kristiyano Baka tayo po'y nagbabalat kayo. Baka tayo po ay uh, secret Christian. Amen? When we are with our peers and groups and friends, we compromise. Pag umiinom sila ng alak, umiinom din tayo ng alak. Pag nagsusugal sila, nagsusugal din tayo. Pag nagsasalita sila ng mura at masama, nakikipagmura rin tayo. Just to fit in. But I tell you, beloved, in the last days, the true Christians will be misfits. That, mean you will, that means you will not fit with the world. Because the values of the world will not be like your values as a Christian. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. Ito pa. One of the signs of the church in the church, sa verse 10, at that time, many will turn away from the faith. And they will betray and hate each other. Amen? So the second sign in the church of the last days is that many will turn away from the faith. The, the, yung pong population ng church ay magdi-decrease sapagkat ano, marami pong tatalikod. Isa po yan sa mga tanda. Kaya kapag nakikita mo na unti-unting nalalagas yung mga kasama mo, yung mga kapatad mo, yung mga igsuon mo, brethren mo, kasama mo, na nagsimula sa ministeryo pero unti-unti silang nalalagas then you will see the imminence of what the Lord has said that in the last days there will be falling away because their love of many will grow cold why? because of the persecution this persecution yung hindi makakatagal tatalikod so related po sila sila po ay very much related backsliding will be very rampant in the church and do you see that happening hello do you see that happening backsliding will be very rampant in the church because the love of many will grow cold there will be a great reduction in the number of church members so do not be surprised amen because the persecution will become more intense and so yung mga hindi po makakatag makakatagal sila po ay manlalamig 
at sila po ay tatalikod at sila po ay magbabackslide. So backsliding is one of the signs of the last days. And it's so sad, but it's going to happen. Because, you know, sabi nila, eh, kaya po hindi po yung totoo na ano, once you are saved, you are saved. You know, meron po tayong... Uh, Meron po tayo mga naririnig na mga ganong katuroan na once na naligtas ka, naligtas ka na kahit na anong klaseng buhay pa ang uh, iyong uh, ikapamuhay. That is not so true because there will be people whose love for God, whose love for the ministry, whose love for the Word of God will grow cold. They will not be able to withstand the persecution that they will turn away from their faith. Matthew 24, verse 10. Amen? And I pray, you know, in my heart that none of us, you know, will fall victim to that. Amen? Amen. I pray in my heart. That's why I always, sabi ko nga, I can preach on this all day because I want to warn people, I want to remind people that, hey, this is going to happen. Huwag kang magpapatrap. This is going to happen. Huwag mong hayaan. Ikaw ay masama sa mga mawawala, malalagas, magbabackslide, manglalamig, at tatalikod. Sapagkat tunay ngang sa huling panahon, marami ang tatalikod, marami ang magtataksil, marami ang magtatakwil ng kanilang pananampalataya. Mateo 24, G's. Matthew 24, 10. Many will turn away from their faith and they will betray and hate each other. Amen? Not only that they will turn away from their faith, kundi gaganti pa sila. They will betray. Amen? Betrayal. Amen? Ano yung betrayal? Nagtiwala ka, pero pagtalikod mo, kinagat ka. Pagtalikod mo, hinampas ka. Pagtalikod mo, binanatan ka. Amen? Maganda sa harapan. Mabuti sa harapan, pero pagtalikod mo, binabanatan ka, binibetray ka, pinagtataksilan ka. Amen? Marami po ang mangyayari at magaganap sa huling kapanahunan sapagkat ang mga ito po ay uh, yung puso nila ay hindi na ayos. Amen. Hindi po nila totally na isuko ang buhay nila at pag at motibo nila sa paglilingkod at sa Panginoon. Amen. Marami po ang motibo ay dahil sa pera. Kaya naman kapag dumating ang kahirapan dahil uh, sila ay nakaranas ng gutom at uh, pangangailangan, sila po ay tumatalikod. Marami naman po ang motibo nila ay uh, ang pride sapagkat sila ay nabigyan ng titulo, nabigyan ng titulong, uh, ano man, ang titulong ito, pastor, bishop, evangelista, guro, pastor. Ikaw ay nabigyan ng titulo. Akala mo yung titulong yun ay sa'yo na. Amen? Hindi mo ina-acknowledge na yun ay pinagkatiwala lamang sa'yo at hindi mo yung gagamitin to usurp power and authority. At ito po ang pinaka, ma, maka, pinaka uh, Bagay na magiging dahilan kung bakit maraming mawawala. Maraming tao, ilalapit nila ang puso ng mga tupa sa puso nila. Hindi sa puso ng Diyos. Naunawa niyo ba ako? Sapagkat sila nabigyan ng titulo, nakatayo sa likod ng pulpito, they will use that power, that title to usurp authority by letting and manipulating the hearts of the flock. Eh, ang flock po kasi napaka-inosente niyan eh. Very trusting. ba? Diba? Yeah, napaka-inosente niyan at napaka-humble niyan at napaka- uh, relatively weak. Amen? Madaling ma-manipulate. Kaya makikita mo yung mga ano, yung mga tupa pag sila naglalakad, sama-sama sila, ba? Diba? Tapos may pastol. Kung saan sila dalhin ng pastol, doon sila nagpupunta. Kung dadalhin sila ng pastol sa kapahamakan, sunod-sunod sila. Kung papunta na sila sa bangin, lahat sila pupunta sa bangin. Sapagkat sinusunod nila ang pastol nila. Pero kapag ang pastol nila ay mabuti, mainam, maganda, dadalhin sila sa kabutihan, dadalhin sila kung saan sila ay makakainom ng tubig, sa sapa. That is the good shepherd. But in the last days, many people, sabi ng Panginoon, many false prophets will deceive. Sa verse 11, Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Many false prophets, not only false prophets, many false lingkod, many false pastors, many false leaders, many false, you know, uh, people who are getting that kind of uh, authority and power will 
appear and they will deceive many. At ang isa po sa mga katangian, para nyo malaman na hindi sa Lord ang mga nakatayo sa harapan nyo, ay kapag ang puso nila, ay ki, ang puso ng tupa ay kinukuha palapit sa Kanya, hindi palapit sa Diyos. That is how you will be able to discern whether this so-called man of God, this so-called leader, this so-called pastor is sent of God. Kapag inilapit niya ang puso niya sa sarili niya at hindi sa Diyos. Kaya naman, kapag dumating ang problema, pagsubok, bagyo ng buhay, ang mga tupa ay ma- ma- mabuhay, hindi po matibay, sapagkat ang kanila pong puso ay hindi nakasangga o nakaangkla sa salita ng Diyos at sa Diyos mismo. Kay pastor, kaya nung nawala si pastor, lahat, lahat din nawala, lahat din nag-backslide, lahat din nanlamig. Sapagkat yung puso nila, binigay nila kay pastor, hindi binigay sa Diyos. Amen? At sino ang merong responsibilidad doon? Si pastor. Sapagkat si pastor, inilapit niya ang puso ng tupa sa kanya, hindi sa Diyos. Amen? Amen. Kaya makikita nyo, mga, mga, I'm talking to you, the flock of God. You know, how will you know if your shepherd, if your leader is somebody that is sent of God? That leader, that pastor should be making you love the Lord more, more than himself. Amen? Dapat ilalapit niya ang puso niyo sa Panginoon. Tuturuan nila kayong magmahal sa Panginoon. Tuturuan nila kayong magtiwala sa Panginoon. Tuturuan nila kayong magbigay sa Panginoon, hindi sa kanila. Amen po ba? Nakunawa niyo po ba? So, isa sa mga tanda sa verse 11, what am I, why am I talking about this? Because in verse 11, it is says, many false, you know, false prophets, false leaders, false pastors will appear to deceive many. Amen? So, kung ikaw ay na-deceive na, mag-repent. Amen? Tayo po ay mag Sisi ng kasalanan sapagkat ibinigay natin yung puso natin sa tao, hindi natin ibinigay ang puso sa Diyos. Kaya naman, pag nawawala yung tao, nawawala ka rin. Hello? Hindi po dapat ganun. Kapag ang puso mo ay nakita mo na nagmamahal sa tao higit sa Diyos at pag nawala yung taong yun, ayaw mo nang umaten, ayaw mo nang maglingkod, ayaw mo nang magbigay ng buhay sa Panginoon, Mali ang pundasyon mo. Mali ang kinagisnan mo. Mali ang nilalakaran mo. Kaya ang dapat mong gawin ay mag-repent. Dalhin po tayo ng katuroan ito sa pagsisisi. At sabihin natin, Panginoon, hindi kita minahal ng ganap. Minahal ko ang tao higit sa iyo. Kaya naman, nung nawala ang mga taong ito, ako'y nanghina, ako'y nag-backslide, ako'y nawala ng gana. Pero kung ganyan ang attitude mo, kapatid, ikaw ay isa sa mga na-deceive ng mga maling turo, ng mga maling tao. Kaya naman ang sabi ng Panginoon, tayo po ay huwag magpapa, magpapa-deceive. Huwag po tayong magpapaloko. Amen? Ito na po ang panahon na tayo pa ay totoong magbigay ng buhay sa Panginoon. Totoong magbigay ng buhay sa, sa mga totoong Kat- katuruan at aral. Amen? Ito pong mga false prophets ng mga messiahs na to, dar- mag- mar- marami po sila eh. Lalabas sila in the last days. At ang mga ituturo nila ay mag- t- magtiteach po sila ng mga, yung mga kikilitiin ka. Yung mga hindi, hindi niya sasabihin sa'yo na, okay na kailangan, uh, uh, hindi, hindi, sasabihin niya, it's alright. Walang mangyayaring masama. Ang sabi nga ng Bible, maraming mangyayaring masama eh. Kaya nga inihahanda ka eh sa mga pagdating ng mga masasamang ito para hindi ka makasama, hindi ka maapektuhan ng mga masasamang ito. Amen? The Lord has enumerated, you know, forthrightly, all of these events that will happen in the last days and one of them is backsliding and one of them is persecution. Be ready for persecution so that when persecution comes to you, hindi ka magbabalat si buyas pagkus magpapakatatag ka sapagkat alam mong dapat mong daanan yan. Birth pain yan. Amen? Pagkatapos niyan, dakilang bagay ang mangyayari sa'yo. Patatatagin ka nito. Amen? These people will say, uh, they will teach peace, but there is no peace. In the last days, there will be no peace. 
There will be roaring against nations. Amen? Magkakaroon ng ingay at patuloy na pag-iingay ng mga bansa-bansa sapagkat mawa, wala pong kapayapaan malibang ikaw ay nasa Panginoon because the true Prince of Peace is the Lord Jesus Christ. These people will preach and teach false teachings like, you know, instead of challenges and and uh, and persecutions they will they will uh, teach about comfort amen they will teach about kinakailangan puro lang tayo blessing 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 walang repentance amen puro blessing 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 lang walang uh, pagbibigay ng buhay walang pagbibigay ng ikapot handog puro blessing blessing lang walang kondisyon so these are the false prophets that will appear in the last days and sadly enough they will deceive many and i pray to god that we will not be deceived. I pray to God that we will not be included in those who will be, you know, manipulated by these false prophets and false teachers and false pastors with false titles carrying false messages. Amen? And I tell you, kapag ang taong yan, madidiscern mo if you have the Spirit of God, if you have the Holy Spirit of the Lord, you will discern if this person has a pure motive or ang motive lang yan ay ang pera mo. Or ang motive lang yan ay yung, yung titulo. Or ang motive lang yan ay magkaroon siya ng, ng pwesto. Madidesert mo yan. Amen? Kapag ipinamahal niya ang sarili niya, at marami na po akong nakitang ganito, pag ipinamahal niya ang sarili niya sa tupa, higit sa Diyos, maling tao yan. Hello? Huwag mong samahan yan. Pero kapag ipinamahal niya sa iyo ang Diyos, Amen? Pinakilala niya sa iyo ang Diyos, hindi yung sarili niya. Hindi yung pangangailangan niya. Amen? Suportahan mo yan, itodo mo na. Kapag ang taong yan ay pinamahal niya sa iyo ang Lord, pinakilala sa iyo ang Lord, hinikayat kang paglingkuran ng Lord. Amen? Hinikayat kang ibigay ang buhay sa Lord. Amen? Suportahan mo ang taong yan sapagkat karapat dapat yan. Itinayo ng Diyos sa huling kapanahonang ito. Pero kapag ang taong yan, ang motibo lang niya ay uh, akitin ka para suportahan siya sa kanyang sariling agenda, then, then uh, something is wrong with that. Amen? Naunawaan ho ba natin? Many people will arise in the last days to deceive many. And I pray that we will not be deceived by these people. You will not be deceived if you have the Holy Spirit of God to discern all these spirits, false spirits false prophets, false teachers, false pastors, false na mga tao. Amen po ba? Amen. Tuloy po natin. Sa verse 12, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. Yun po yung sinasabi ko. Because there will be a lot of wickedness that will arise in these last days, most of, them, of these people love for the Lord, love for church, love for ministry will grow cold. Amen. Marami na po ba kayong nakitang ganyan? Nanlamig, nawala, nawala. The, the love has grown cold. Amen. Marami na po akong nakita. Marami na po akong nasaksihan. Why? Because the increase in wickedness is something that they cannot Hindi po nila na, na overcome, hindi po nila na cope. So, ang nangyari po, sa halip na sila po ay magpatuloy, sila po ay nawala at sila po ay nanlamig sa Panginoon. Amen? Kaya naman sa verse 13, nang sabi ng Panginoon, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Amen? Siya na makakatagal hanggang wakas ay maliligtas. Okay. Ngayon, ang sabi ng iba, once you are saved, you are saved. Kahit na ano pang mangyari. Eh, bakit sinabi ng Bible? Patagalan. Bakit sinabi ng Bible? Siya na makakatagal. Ibig sabihin, may mga hindi makakatagal. Right? Sabi ng Bible, merong mga manlalamig, mawawala. Merong mga, merong mga madideceive. Na nakatanggap na ng tamang aral. Amen? Nakakalungkot po, nakatanggap na ng tamang aral. Pero kamukat-mukat mo, makikita mo, nasa maling iglesia na, nasa maling katuroan na, nasa mga, ling, mga grupo na. Amen? Nakakalungkot po because, you know, I have this, uh, you know, very special person that I know. You know, na nagsimula kami, ma ma nasa ministeryo, nagsimula kaming uh, 
nag, nakakilala sa Lord, nagsimula kaming naglingkod sa Lord, isang araw, nakita ko, nasa ibang bansa na siya, iba na yung mga pinupost niya. Amen? Iba na. Yung mga pinupost niya at masipag niyang pinupost ay yung mga nasa mga dating daan. Yung mga grupo ng mga nagmumura. Gina-justify pa niya yung pagmumura. Amen? So, ano pong... Kaya totoo, di ba? Many will be deceived. Even the elect, actually, the Bible says, even the elect, yung mga nakakilala sa Panginoon, sila po mismo ay madideceive. Even the elect. Amen? So, that's why in verse 13, we are admonished to stand firm to the end. Because those who will stand firm to the end, will be saved. So, if you are not able to stand firm to the end, will you be saved? If you have backslidden, if your heart has grown cold, and you have refused to continue on with your journey in loving the Lord, in, you know, in, in being saved, and in worshiping the Lord, will you be saved? Because you have backslidden, nawala ka, nanlamig ka, na, nag, nag, binalikan mo ang mundo. Binalikan mo ang dati mong gawa. Masasave ka ba nun? The Bible says those who will be able to stand firm in the end will be saved. Why? Because in the last days, both, sabi ng Bible, the width and the tares will grow together. Yung damo at saka yung width, pareho silang tutubo. Pareho silang iaalaw na tutubo. Alright? So, but in the last days, there will become an uprooting magkakaroon po ng harvest of souls at ang Panginoon, ihihiwalay niya ang, way, ang wheat sa, sa tares na nag-grow together. There will be a separation. Makikita natin mamaya, meron yung isa nandoon sa bukid, yung isa na iwan, yung isa ay, ay nawala. Amen? Kinuha na ng Lord, which is yung rapture scenario. So, there will become a winnowing and uprooting. And in the end, those who were able to stand firm to the end will be saved. That's why God, the Lord is admonishing us. Now, we might be going through a lot of troubles and problems. At hindi po sinabi ng Lord na pag naging Kristiyano tayo, we will be like you know, sleeping in a bed of roses, sabi nga nila, di ba? Pero tayo po ay patuloy na lumalaban. At sa ating paglaban, kapag tayo po ay nanatiling nakatayo hanggang wakas, tayo po ay maliligtas. So, binibigyan po tayo ng Panginoon ng encouragement, ng admonition na tayo po ay magpakatatag hanggang wakas. Amen po ba? Amen. Kaya pa ba? Kaya pa? Hello? Sa awa ng Panginoon, persevere to the end. To the end. Hindi po will ng Lord na along in the middle of our journey, we give up. Because we will be found, you know, As those who have grown cold, as those who have backslidden and turned away from the Lord, the Lord is telling us, persevere to the end. Be strong, be firm, stand firm to the end. Hanggang sa dulo. Amen? Sa verse 14, ituloy po natin. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Matthew 24:14. When will the end come? When this gospel, when this gospel that we are teaching and preaching, you know, and you know, uh, tire, un, untiringly uh, preaching this gospel will be preached into all the world as a testimony to all nations. Sabi sa Matthew 24:14, the end will come. Amen? So, napaka-dali na lang po ngayon ang mag-preach ng gospel. Napaka-dali na lang po ngayon abutin ang lahat ng tao para masabing the end will come because the all peoples of the earth will be able to preach the gospel. Alam niyo po doon sa sa India, mayroong isang isla doon na hindi po sila napapasok kasi hanggang ngayon primitive pa po yung mga tao doon, walang mga damit, may mga sibat at hindi po nila pinapayagang pumasok ang mga tao doon. Pero mayroong isang pong Kristiyano, missionary, he tried, he attempted and when he because he wanted to preach the gospel to them, And this missionary, 
sacrificed his life because he was never able to leave the island alive. Hanggang ngayon, hindi po alam kung patay na siya. Alam nila patay na siya. Sapagkat pagpasok, nung una pumunta siya, nakipag-usap siya kung pwedeng mag Sabi sa kanya, hindi ka namin pinapayagan. We do not allow you to come and preach. We do not allow you to come. We don't allow foreigners here. So, bumalik po siya. Pagbalik, pero makulit. Bumalik pa siya. Pagbalik niya, pinatay na siya. Kasi binigyan ka namin ng warning eh. Bumalik ka pa rin eh. So, ito, sabi ng mga tao, this, this is crazy. Crazy tong tao to. Binigyan na nga siya ng pagkakataong bumalik eh. At maligtas eh. Eh, ginawa niya, bumalik pa rin talaga siya eh. O, wala nang pananagutan yung mga tribo doon. Pinatay talaga siya. Amen. Nang mga, ng mga spears nila with poison. And uh, yung family ng, ng uh, uh, taong ito, ng misyonaring ito, kahit lang yung bangkay nila makuha. Pero in, wala, walang makapasok doon. Takot ang mga tao eh. Because they have preserved their, their, their tribe for thousands of years. And this missionary has, is fulfilling the, the commission, the great commission of preaching the gospel to all the peoples of the earth. Amen? And, and if you see this, happening right now you know it is a fulfillment of Matthew 24 14 and this gospel shall be preached into all the kingdoms and to all the nations of the world so that the end will come and this technology of being able to preach the word you know in in once in one place reaching out you know napakalaki ng, ng coverage ng reach natin ngayon because of internet because of the highway of information. Amen? So, makikita po natin yung Matthew 24, 14, nagaganap na. So that when the time comes, nobody will be able to say, I did not hear the gospel. Eh, kahit nga yung tribu doon eh, pre-niche, I believe this man before he died was able to preach that say, to say, Jesus loves you. Alright? Bago po siya nalagutan ng hilinga. Bago po siya tinira ng mga poisonous spears. He must have shouted, kagaya ni Stephen, The Lord forgive you and the Lord Jesus loves you before he died. Fulfilling the Great Commission, Matthew 24, 14. Amen? So the second category is about the church. The church being persecuted, the church going backsliding, or turning their hearts cold, and number three, the church being aggressive in fulfilling the Great Commission, preaching the gospel to all the peoples of the earth. And uh, if you have the opportunity, kaya mo, na, nabibless po ako sa mga taong nagre-reshare nung ating mga, nung ating mga preaching messages, sa lahat, sinishare nila sa mga nagtitinda ng mga auto, nagtitinda ng mga bahay, nagtitinda, nakikita ko po yung mga nire-reshare nyo. Praise God! Because madaanan man nila sa wall nila yon, dumaan man sa wall nila, you did your part. Amen? Panoorin man nila ng ilang segundo or hindi man nila panoorin, you did your part to spread the gospel. Amen? And if you are given that privilege, that platform, amen, mag-load ka lang ng limang piso or sampung piso siguro, makakapag-Facebook ka na at makakapag-reshare ka ng Word of God, ng mga posts and messages natin. Do your part, amen, in the propagation of the gospel because in the last days, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the nations of the world. And if you are the instrument of God to preach this gospel, To fulfill this great commission, then praise God. Amen? Pina, minamadali po natin ang pagdating ng Panginoon. Alright. Kung itutuloy po natin, ay katlong kategory para, ma, para ma, ma, malaman natin yung mga events of the last days. Una, yung distress and uh, disasters in the world. Yung mga wars and famines and earthquakes and plagues. Yung pangalawa po ay yung church. Persecuted, persecution ng church backsliding ng church at lukewarmness ng church at uh, fulfilling the Great Commission. Ang pangatlo po ay ang Israel. Okay? Tinuro ko po ito nung nakaraan. Okay? Israel is a sign. The distress that will come upon Israel is a sign in the last days. Israel will have no peace. It will never experience peace. It will only experience so-called 
peace when the Antichrist will come and offer it peace. But the Antichrist is the false Christ and the, the Messiah, the false Messiah. He will be able to give the false peace to Israel. But that means the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Amen? So, sa so verse 15, tinuloy ng Panginoon, si Jesus po nagsasalita dito sa Matthew 24. So when you see, standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation is spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Amen. So isa sa mga signs ay ang Israel. Sapagkat sa Israel ay darating po ang tyrant, yung uh, abomination of desolation, ang sabi doon. Ito po si Antichrist. Ito po si Antichrist. Sa Daniel 9.27, siya po ay binanggit. And he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. One week means seven. Right? One week is seven. Seven years. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to the sacrifices and grain offering. And on the wing of abominations will come who won who makes desolate even until the complete destruction. One that is decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Amen? So, makikipagkasundo po si Antichrist sa mga Israelita. Bibigyan po sila ng kapayapaan. One week, seven years of the Great Tribulation. And in the middle of that week, after three and a half years, he will appear to be the abomination of desolation. The Antichrist, the tyrant, the ruler who will establish his uh, kingdom in Israel. Gagawin niyang sentro ang Jerusalem ng kanyang pag-rule all over the world. He will become the one world tyrant who will rule the world and his center of governance is Israel. He will sit on that because he will claim himself to be the Messiah, the Antichrist. Sa Daniel 11.31, forces from him will arise. He will desecrate the sanctuary fortress and do away with the regular sacrifice. And they will set up the abomination of desolation. So, Antichrist, I don't know how he will do it, but by his charm and diplomatic uh, skills, he will be able to make the Muslim people in Israel give in so that the temple will be rebuilt in Israel and the sacrifices that the Jews have been longing to do for centuries will finally happen. Magkakaroon po ulit ng sacrifices doon sa temple because the temple out of nowhere will be rebuilt and it will be made possible by the Antichrist. Wala pong makakagawa nito ngayon sapagkat ang temple, the Solomon's temple kung saan uh, idatayo, itatayo po yung temple na yon in the last days is occupied by by mosques. Hindi po posible sa ngayon pero hindi ko alam kung paano mangyayari. But in the last days, sabi sa Daniel, he will allow it. Amen? Magkakaroon ng temple worship but in the middle of that week, in the middle of that, he will stop the sacrifices and he will make and set up himself as the abomination of desolation. This is the Antichrist, the 666. Okay? Sa Matthew 24 na tinatawag. Sa Daniel 12, 11, from the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days equivalent to three and a half years the other half of the great tribulation amen so sa huling tatlo at kalahating taon ng the great tribulation magpapakilala siya, siya bilang antikristo at dito na niya po i-oppress ang israel dito niya, niya na po pahihirapan ang, ang 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 bansang israel okay so dito po tinutukoy sa ang great tribulation the great tribulation ituloy po natin sa verse 16 sabi po doon then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains okay ito na po yung scenario ng the great tribulation sapagkat the abomination of desolation is coming out siya na po ay nagpapakilala he is the tyrant the antichrist let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house let no one in the field go back to get their cloak how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers 
Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Verse 22, if those days have not been cut short, no one will survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened, three and a half years lang. And at that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. Because false messiahs and false prophets will appear and they will perform great signs and wonders to deceive even the elect. Verse 25, see, I have told this ahead of time. Hello. The Lord is preparing us for all these things that are, that are to come. V hindi po nagtalinghaga ang Panginoon. This is not a parable, but a very forthright expression of the signs of the last days. Of what will happen in the end of days. And here, the Lord is describing the scenario of the Great Tribulation. When the abomination of desolation will come and appear. And in the last three and a half years, this is the scenario. Meron pong mga aakyat and flee to the mountains sapagkat sila po yahabulin ng army na Antichrist. Let no one on the house top go down or take anything out of the house. Wala ka ng pagkakataon para kunin yung mga gusto mo because you will run for your life. Amen? Let no one in the field go back to their cloak. Hindi ka makakabalik. Wala ka nang babalikan. At napaka-dreadful po para sa mga pregnant women. Because, you know, pregnant women have a very delicate situation. And nursing mothers. And so pray that your flight will not take place in winter or in Sabbath. Ano ba yung winter? Taglamig. Taglamig. Masarap matulog. Masarap magpahinga. Ayaw mong lumabas. Amen? Para pong sa ating mga spirito, kapag winter, taglamig. Malamig ang ating puso. Huwag daw sanang dumating ang pagkakataong ito na taglamig sa ating mga spirito. Na tayo po ay natutulog. Huwag po sanang dumating na ito ay Sabbath. Ano po ang Sabbath? Rest day. Namamahinga. Amen? Huwag po sana tayong abutan na namamahinga sa ating paglilingkod. Huwag po sana tayong abutan na malamig sa ating mga puso patungkol sa ating pag-ibig sa Diyos because there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning and never to be equaled again. Wala na pong ibang klaseng paghihirap at distress na magaganap. Ito po ang tinutukoy ng great tribulation. Na kinakailangang paikliin ng Panginoon dahil pag hindi pinaikli, walang matitira. Even the elect will be, will fall victim. Amen po ba? So, for all these things, ang sabi ng Panginoon, if anyone tells you there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Here he is in the inner room. Do not believe it. Amen. So tayo pong mga nakakaalam, tayo pong merong karunungan, merong knowledge about all of these things. When these things will happen, wag po tayong madeceive. Amen. Wag po tayong maniwala because marami pong magaganap na mga kababalaghan. Sabi po doon sa verse 24, false messiahs and false prophets will appear and they will perform great signs and wonders as well. Gagawa po sila ng mga dakilang himala. Gagawa po sila ng mga signs and wonders that even the elect will be deceived. Amen? Si, si, ano po, si, si Antichrist, ay, uh, siya po ay nilokuban ni Satanas. He is Antichrist. He is, he is Satan incarnate. He claims himself to be Jesus, the Messiah. But the real Jesus is God incarnate, the Son of God. Siya ang Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Now, dumating dalawang libong taon ang nakakaraan, napako sa krus ng Kalbaryo, nireject ng mga Hudyo. Pero sa huling kapanahunan, darating si Antikristo. Siya si Satanas na nagkatawang tao, tatanggapin siya ng mga Hudyo. He will be worshipped, he will make himself be worshipped by God's people until he reveals himself as the abomination of desolation. Naunawan ho ba natin? And when these things will happen, sabi po doon sa verse 27 to 31, ito na po yung scenario of the second coming of Christ. The lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west. So 
will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, pagkatapos po ng mga distress na mangyayari, sapagkat si Antichrist po hahuntingin niya ang lahat ng tao, patatatakan niya ng 666, at ang hindi magpapatatak ng 666, pupugutan niya ng ulo. Ganun niya po kukontrolin ang buong mundo. The sun will be darkened, Matthew 24, 29. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. This is the, ang mangyayari at magagalap before the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole world will be plunged into darkness because the natural source of light, the sun will become dark. The moon will not give its light anymore and the stars will fall from the sky. Lahat mong ito ay source of light, source of light. But if all these sources of light will not function, ano pong mangyayari? This world will be plunged into darkness. And then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Verse 30, And all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. They will gather his elect from for four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. So, ano po yung sinasabi dito? The world will be plunged in deep darkness, in deep anguish, perplexity. They will be lost in these conditions of human race. Imagine the sun finally giving up its light and moon not ever shining again and all of the stars in the heaven will fall back to earth. That kind of darkness. And it is this kind of darkness that will rage and will prepare for the coming of the Son of Man in blazing glory. Because the Lord will come in blazing glory, kinakailangan. Di ba pag, pag meron kang uh, highlight ng isang uh, palabas, Nagkakaroon ng ano muna? Ng kadiliman, dim light, curtain close. Pagkatapos nun, bubukas. Because that is the highlight and the climax of the show. In the same manner that all of this darkness and perplexity, anguish, and uh, feeling of lo being lost shall happen to the human race to prepare for the coming of the Son of Man, the Son of God. So Isaiah 17:12 says many woe to the many nations that rage they rage like the raging sea woe to the peoples who roar because they roar like the roaring of great waters amen Sa Luke 21 meron itong parallel tong Matthew 24 na to ay parallel niya ang Luke 21 Sabi po doon sa Luke 21:26 people will faint from terror Apprehensive of what is coming to the world because the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Yan po ang version ng Luke 21:26. The heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars. Sabi po ni Isaiah, the, the, the heavens will be rolled out like a carpet. Amen. Ganun po, at hindi parang carpet na maroroll yung heavens. Mawawala lahat ng mga ng mga stars and moon and, and sun and, and all heavenly bodies, God will shake it. Oh God, sino ang makakagawa nun kung hindi isang supernatural power? Sa Luke 21:26, yung faint doon, ang Greek origin niya ay apopsiko. It means to depart from life or to expire or to die. In other, in other definition, ang sabi doon, to breathe out one's life okay to faint from terror people will literally die or people will want to die because of this extreme anguish and terror that the world will be plunged into people will want to die people will faint from terror ang sabi doon apopsiko which means they want to die. They are losing courage. They want to die. They are dying to fear in the face of these awesome and terrible events and so men will give up on life. 
they just want to die. Gusto ko nang mamatay. And so, kung ito palang na virus na nararanasan natin, marami ng tao ang gustong magpakamatay because of fear. Sa Japan, nagpapakamatay po ang mga tao. Virus pa lang ito. This is just a COVID-19 virus. Wala pa po itong mga shaking of the heavenlies. Amen? Wala pa po itong shaking of these heavenly bodies. But people are already wanting to die because of terror, because of pain, because of fear. But in, in, it is on this world's darkest hour that the Lord Jesus Christ chooses to come back in blazing glory. Kaya may kita po natin doon sa doon po sa isang verse doon sabi sabi po ng Panginoon in those days you know he will be like uh, uh, parang kidlat po siyang darating. Amen. Para po siyang kidlat na na darating. Sa so verse 27, for as the lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west So will be the coming of the Son of Man. He will become. He will be like a lightning. Amen. Ano po ba yung lightning? Merong po ba yung pasintabe? Wala. Bigla na lang. Bigla na lang siyang uh, lalabas mula sa kalangitan. Amen. That's how. That's how. That's how uh, things will be when the Lord will come again. He will come in the world's darkest hour. The Lord Jesus Christ will come like a lightning. Sabi nga ng Bible, like a thief in the night. Darating po siya na parang isang magnanakaw. Walang sabi-sabi. Walang pasintabi. So, ang pagdating po ng Panginoon, bagamat merong mga tanda, the Bible says, no one knows when and where, what time exactly it is. Amen? Pero ang sinas- pinag-aaralan po natin dito ay second coming of Christ. Okay? Second coming of Christ, kung saan babalik po siya dito at tutungtong dito sa lupa, hindi po ito rapture lang. Alright? Sapagkat maari ang rapture ay nag- naganap na. Uh, the rapture itself is, uh, you know, uh, isa pong separate uh, event na hin- well, hindi po ito yung second coming of Christ. Okay? Rapture is the first phase of the second coming of Christ where there is a meeting up in the air. So tayo po, marahil, kung pre-trib tayo, itong mga bagay na ito, hindi na natin makikita before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kasi ka, tayo yung kasama ng Lord Jesus Christ pabalik dito sa lupa para ipagtanggol ang Israel sa Battle of Armageddon. Naunawa no ba natin? Okay. Now, sa verse 37, ang sabi po doon, As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days of Noah, There was flood. People were eating and drinking, marrying and giving up to marriage after the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. This is rapture. Dalawang ang tao raw ang nandun sa field. Isa will be taken up. Isa will be may iiwan. Alright. And so the greatest question is, ikaw ba ang kasama dun sa makukuha? O ikaw ba yung mga kasama sa maiiwan? Matthew 24.40 Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. And one will be taken and the other left. Dalawang babae ang nag-grind doon ng meal. Isa mawawala at kukunin at isa maiiwan. So dalawa lang po ang choices natin. Pipiliin nating makasama sa kukunin for the rapture or pipiliin nating maiwan para mag-suffer sa great tribulation sa kamay ni Antikristo. That is why I am always, as I said, I can preach on this all day. Because the Bible says in Matthew 24, 42, Therefore, you keep watch. You keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. You keep watch. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng keep watch? Magbantay. We are the watchmen. And if we have this knowledge, as watchmen, it is our responsibility to tell others as well. Give them this message. Amen? Give them this choice. Because 
whether you believe it or not, you who are listening right now, whether you believe that we are in the last days, the Lord is speaking in Matthew 24. He has enumerated all these events that will happen before he comes again for his second coming. And it is your responsibility to choose today whether you want to be raptured, to be taken, or you want to be left behind. Because in Matthew 24, 40, there are two men who will be in the field during that day. One will be taken and one will be left behind. Amen. And uh, which do you want? Which do you choose? Do you want to be taken and be raptured with the Lord Jesus Christ? Or do you want to be left behind? If you want to be left behind and you choose to be left behind, be ready because you will suffer to the great tribulation. And uh, I'm telling you right now that the Antichrist will try to put the mark of the beast in you, the 666, dito sa iyong forehead or dito sa iyong kamay. At pag nangyari yun, binibigyan na kita ng babala, wag na wag kang magpapatatak. Okay? Baka hindi na tayo magkita. Okay? Because ako, ang aking, ang aking desire ay marapture. I don't want to see the Antichrist face to face. Bagamat sabi nila, guwapo siya. He's very charismatic and very handsome. That's why he will be able to deceive many. In fact, he will rule the world and many people will love him because he's such a charismatic spirit that he will be able to manipulate people and let believe in him. But I don't desire to see Antichrist. I want to be raptured and I, want, I don't want to be left behind. Amen? So, but I am giving you a stark warning that when these things happen, narinig ko yun na. Isang araw prinits yun eh. Narinig ko yun sa Facebook na merong Antichrist na lalabas. At ang sabi, huwag daw akong magpapatatak. Okay? Kakayanin mo bang huwag magpatatak? Kung wala ka kasing tatak ng 666, hindi ka makakapag-grocery. Hindi ka makakakain. So, anong gagawin mo? Hahabulin ka ng army ni Antichrist para katatakan ng Antichrist. So, kaya sabi nila ngayon, paraan daw ni Antichrist itong vaccination eh. <laughs> para matatakan. Vaccination naman yun, hindi naman yung tatak, no? Amen? Hindi naman tatak yun eh. Si Antichrist tatatakan pagdating ng, uh, ng, ng Great Tribulation. Pero yung vaccination po ngayon, huwag po kayong matakot. Vaccination, if you Google it, is a, a way to keep you safe, to boost your immune system, to fight sickness and disease. That's how simple the definition of vaccination. Okay? It will boost your immune system so that your body will fight any kind of virus, any kind of bacteria or germs that will come into your body. It will boost your immune system. Amen. So uh, there's nothing to be scared or afraid. Marami po kasing mga false uh, misinformation and disinformation campaign. Kagaya nung pinsan ko, sabi niya, yun daw mama niya nagpa-vaccinate kasi 60 plus years old na. So masaya naman siya. Pag-uwi niya, meron siyang na, na, ano, na, na, na text message. Sabi, bakit ka nagpatatak? Magiging zombie ka after two years. Magiging zombie. Sabi ng pinsan ko, nataranta yung ali, hindi makatulog, tinawagan ako, nagiiyak, takot na takot, magiging zombie raw siya. Galit na galit yung pinsan ko, sabi niya kung sino man yung nagpapakalat ng mga maling information na ito, pipilipitin ko talagang dila eh. Dahil kung may masamang nangyari sa nanay ko, dahil sa nervyos na magiging zombie siya pagkatapos ng dalawang taon, talagang makakapatay ako ng tao, <laughs> sabi ng pinsan ko. Amen? So, itong vaccination, hindi po ito ano ni Antichrist. Amen. Huwag po kayong uh, nag nagpapaniwala. Ito pong vaccination ay paraan para matigil ang pagkalat ng COVID-19. Dahil kung ikaw ay may vaccine, malamag sa hindi, hindi ka tatablan. Or kung tatablan ka, lalaban ang katawan mo at hindi ka mamamatay, hindi severe ang, 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 ang tama sa'yo. Pero malamang hindi ka tatablan. Because, kaya kinakailangan magkaroon ng 
vaccination sa buong Pilipinas para matigil ang pagkalat ng virus. Hanggat hindi ka nabavaccinate, may posibilidad na makuha mo ang virus. Pero kung may vaccine ka, meron kang protection sa virus. Ganon po kasimple iyon. Ako po, nanay ako, nung bata ako, nung mga bata pa yung mga anak ko, dadarin ko sila sa center, nagpapa-BCG kami, nagpapa-measles vaccine kami. It is the same concept. Amen? Okay, takot ba ako? Baka nung may mangyari sa anak ko, nung ako pinavaccine ko yung mga anak ko ng BCG, measles, mumps, MMR, and everything, bumalik pa nga ako para ma-boost. Amen? E puri ng Panginoon, Nagkaroon ng mga anak ko ng mga tigdas, parang dumaan lang eh. Pero meron po akong pinsan. Tinamaan ng tigdas ng bata, hindi nakasurvive. Sapagkat nauna siyang tinamaan ng tigdas bago siya nabigyan ng measles vaccine. Amen? So, I hope and pray na hindi po tayo magpapadeceive sa mga misinformation. Because in the same manner, in the last days, many false messages will arise. Amen? So, kailangan po maging matalino tayo. Amen po ba? And there's nothing to fear. Huwag po tayong matatakot. Huwag po tayong matatakot. Kasapagkat uh, ang Panginoon po ay uh, minsan may mga instrumento siya para po tayo pag-ingatan sa huling kapanahunan nito. Because these things will happen and uh, the Lord has promised protection upon us but if He is using some instruments to protect us, then so be it. Amen? Wala po akong mararamdamang resistance eh. In my spirit, I had all the peace in the world when I had my first dose of vaccine. I had all the peace in the world. I did not feel safer because of the vaccine. I felt, I always felt safe because the Lord has promised in Psalm 91 that He will keep me safe. Amen? And I just pray that that vaccine will be able to be used by God To, to keep me safe until He comes again. Amen? Because I believe, hindi lamang po COVID-19. Marami, ngayon, meron na naman. May SARS na naman. Ay, meron na naman uh, H1N1 na kung ano-ano na naman na flu, bird flu na naman sa China na, na lumalabas. Amen? So, so many plagues will come in the last days and uh, those are just signs of the times. Now, I would like to end with this question. When you are hearing and reading Matthew 24, what do you feel? Ano ang nararamdaman mo? Pag binabasa mo ang Matthew 24, which is, you know, verses about the last days and the signs of the age, how do you feel? Do you feel scared? Or do you feel hopeful and blessed? When you look around you and you see the distress that is happening around It seems like COVID-19 is not letting up, but you know there's this third wave and fourth wave and fifth wave and continues to you know rage among the nations. Akala ng iba nakalagtas na sila. Meron na naman in 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 United Kingdom. Meron na silang immunity herd kasi yung vaccination nila ang bilis eh sa kanila galing yung vaccine mismo eh. Pero they are fearing that you know they will have another wave, you know, this coming June or July. See? So, what, what am I saying? In the last days, all of these things, plagues will happen. But the Lord has given us the assurance, amen, that He will keep us safe. Amen? And the Lord is telling us to be prepared, to keep watch, because you do not know what day the Lord your God will come. And my next question is, do you belong to the rapture ready people or do you belong to those left behind people to those who are living their lives carelessly to those they to those who do not care about the signs of the times about the things that they have to be ready because the lord is coming very soon the bible says in luke 21 34 to 36 and i would like to end with these verses be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. 
be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. He who will be able to remain firm in the end, he will be saved. The Lord has given us these signs. The Lord has given us these messages so that we will be careful to let our hearts rest in the peace of our Lord and not be weighed down with the anxieties and worries of life. Sapagkat napakarami po nating problema ang dinadala, di ba? Napakarami po nating mga laban na nilalaban sa buhay na ito. Napakarami po nating mga kabigatan sa buhay. At sa, kaya ang sinasabi ng Panginoon, mag-ingat kayo na huwag kayong ma-pull down ng mga worries na ito ng buhay. Because these anxieties will come to you. Like a trap. Amen? These are trap that will take you away from your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lahat po ng mga bagay na ito will, can weigh us down. Our vices, drunkenness, gambling, our pride, our love for money, our, all of our lukewarmness and backsliding in our hearts. All of this could be a trap that can take away our love for the Lord. And in the last days, I pray. It is my prayer, utmost prayer, na tayo po ay maging maingat. Bantayan po natin ang ating mga spiritual life. Amen? Huwag na huwag po natin ahayaang mawala po tayo sa Panginoon. Huwag na huwag po natin ahayaang hindi po tayo makatayo sa harapan ng Panginoon bagkos tatayo tayo sa harapan ni Antikristo sa huling kapanahunan. In the last days, these are going to happen, the Lord says to His disciples, and He enumerated all these things. And you look around you, and all these things are happening. Now, I don't know when, I don't know what time exactly the Lord will come, but I know that His coming is imminent. Amen? That's why we should live on the edge of eternity. Everything that we do, lahat po ng ginagawa natin, should be in the perspective of the Word of God, should be in the perspective of eternity. Kapag meron kang desisyon na ginagawa, kapag meron kang bagay na ginagawa, isipin mo kung ito ba ay makakatulong sa'yo para makasama ka sa rapture o ito ay makakatulong sa'yo para maiwan ka sa rapture. Because the Bible says in Matthew 24:40, during that time, there will be two men in the field. One will be taken away and will be with the Lord and one will be left behind. So which of those two do you belong to? Are you rapture ready? Or are you playing with your spiritual life, compromising with the devil, doing sins that can trap you and weigh you down and lose your salvation? Sa buhay pong ito, dawa, tayo po ay maging maingat. Luke 21:34 says, Be careful. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, with sin. Amen? In the last days, sabi doon, it will be like the days of Noah. What are the characteristics of the days of Noah? People are given to drunkenness. Amen? Nagiinom ng alak. Amen? Para po sa marami, okay lang naman ang uminom ng alak. Kasi social, ano yan eh? For socializing. It's an occasional thing. You know, but, you know, saan po nagsisimula ang uh, pag-inom ng alak? Sa patikim-tikim. Pagkatapos, you will fall and you will become a drunkard. And drunkenness can be a cause for you to lose your salvation, just like in the days of Noah. Ano pa? People will be given to marriage. Amen? Yung mga tao, ang pinagkakaabalahan nila ay mag-asawa, mag-asawa, mag-asawa. Hindi naman po masamang mag-asawa. Pero kung ang inaasawa mo, kapwa babae, kapwa lalaki, hindi po tama yun. Hindi naman po masamang mag-asawa, pero kapag ang buhay mo, ang motivation mo, I, you are driven. Kasi mag-aasawa ako, kaya nga magtrabaho ako, magtrabaho ako, kumuha ako ng maraming pera, magkaroon ako ng mag- maraming uh, pera sa bangko para sa aking hinaharap. At nagiging dahilan ito para hindi mo magawa kung ano pinapagawa ng Diyos sa iyo. You are consumed 
by your motive to get married and have a good life with a good family, you know, that you are sinasantabi mo yung pinapagawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo. And I pray that hindi po ganun ang mangyari sa buhay natin. Amen? There will come a time when we will be able to experience all these things. We will see all these things happening before our very eyes. And I pray that we will be able to watch. Sabi nga dun sa Matthew 24 or Luke 21, 36. Watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Hindi po maganda yung mga nangyayari sa daigdig natin ngayon. We are, uh, it, it is very distressful. But sometimes, these things are bound to happen so that we will be able to see the fulfillment of God's promises. In the midst of darkness, the Lord will come in blazing glory. So that we will be able to say, come Lord Jesus, come take your place. During that time, Sin will be defeated. Darkness will be defeated. The battle of Armageddon will ensure that the Lord Jesus Christ will gain victory with His army and He will defeat the enemies of Antichrist. And He will establish His kingdom here on earth for 1,000 years and He will reign in peace. And that's what we look forward to. And we are so privileged and honored and blessed to know all this truth. We are not ignorant of this truth. We are prepared for this truth. And I pray that you who are watching right now, you might be wondering, what is he talking about? Anong sinasabi nito? Anong battle of Armageddon? Anong second coming of Christ? Anong 1,000 years of rain dito sa mundo? Anong darkness and sun and moon and stars will fall to the ground? Anong antichrist? You might be wondering, But I'm telling you this so that you can watch and pray so that when the time comes, you will be able to stand before the Son of Man. And the first thing that you have to do right now is to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The first thing you have to do right now is to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. If for the longest time you have been disobeying the Lord, you have not known the Lord, you have ignored Him in your life, you have rebelled against Him, ikaw ay isang suwail na anak, ikaw ay isang suwail na tao at hindi ka kumikilala sa Diyos bilang iyong Diyos, Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. This is now the time for you to repent. You know, these things are being given to you, being taught to you so that you will be brought to repentance. You will be brought to humility. At ito na po ang panahon na tayo po ay lumapit sa Diyos, magsuko ng buhay sa Diyos, magtiwala sa Diyos sapagkat darating po ang mas marami pang higit na kahindik-hindik na kaganapan sa daigdig. Kung ngayon, ikaw ay na, natataranta na. Kung ngayon, ikaw ay takot na takot na. Higit pa pong katakot-takot at kahindik-hindik na ganap ang mangyayari sa hinaharap. At ang nais ng Panginoon kapag dumating ang panahon yun, ikaw ay makapagsuko ng buhay sa Diyos upang hindi ka mapahamak bagkus maligtas. Kaya naman sa oras na to, Nais kitang anyayahan. I want to invite you. Surrender your life to Jesus. He is the Son of God who will come and reign in peace and victory when the perfect time comes. But in the meantime, Matthew 24 is telling us this world will be in great distress. The plagues are coming. I am not scaring you. But I am telling you the truth because in the last days the Lord says there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be earthquakes and plagues and famines. The church will be persecuted. The church love for God will grow cold and they will backslide. The church will go through a lot of pain. The church will suffer persecution. But the Lord is saying, Do not panic. Stand firm to the end. Do not faint of this terror and things that are going to happen. But in fact, the Lord is saying, in these darkest hours, I will come in blazing glory. Do you want to surrender your life to Jesus? 
Do you want to give your life and entrust your life to the Lord? Today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day that your name will be written in the book of life in the heavens. Hallelujah. So oh God I'm waiting and as we are waiting oh God waiting. we are surrendering our lives to you and we are entrusting our very lives to you even as we ask for your forgiveness in our lives we acknowledge that we have rebelled against thee we acknowledge that we have strayed away from your will we acknowledge that we have been given to drunkenness we acknowledge that we are full of pride and love of money and lust of the flesh and lust of the eye we acknowledge and I acknowledge that I am not worthy of your love and forgiveness forgive me for being a rebel forgive me for not being able to do your will forgive me oh God in the name of Jesus lahat po ng aking kasalanan, mula pagkabata hanggang kasalukuyan, hinihingi ko po ng tawad. Panginoong Yesus, binubuksan ko ang puso ko sa iyo. I open my life to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I open my heart to you. And I accept you as my personal Lord, God, and Savior. Come into my life. Reign into my life. Rule over my life. And let your will be done in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, write my name in the book of life. Give me eternal life. Give me a new life. Give me a new beginning. And help me be able to do your perfect will until you come again. In the name of Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer in your heart, the Lord has assured that your name is written in the book of life and that you have eternal life. It is not by good works. It is not by being a member of religion that we are saved. But it is our faith in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, who gave His life for our redemption and salvation. And today, if you have put your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. Hallelujah. And you are now about to begin a journey of faith, a journey of life that will love the Lord, that will serve the Lord, that will worship the Lord. And I pray that you come to read the Bible, the Word of God, that the Lord will create hunger and thirst in your heart for the Word of God. Seek continually 
His will. You shall know the truth and the truth will continue to set you free. And continue to listen to this kind of messages. The pure, unadulterated word of God. The messages that comes from the very heart of God. Because in the last days, God has chosen churches, ministries that will proclaim the unadulterated word of God. And if you are listening to this kind of message, embrace it. And if you have the chance to visit churches like this, go and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying, whatever you need from Him right now, do you need strength? Do you need peace? Do you need blessing? Do you need prosperity? Breakthrough financially? Do you need healing from your sickness and disease? Are you asking for a miracle from God? Oh, right now the Lord is willing and able to meet you, touch you by His power and great anointing. Be ready to receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a Christian and you are saying, Lord, I am losing my strength. Lord, I am losing my hope. Lord, I am getting cold. I do not love you as before. I am getting weak. And I need you more than ever before in my life. If you are asking for that, Receive the very presence of God in your life. Receive the strength of God. Receive the mercies of God. Receive the peace of God and the joy that will help you overcome. Pinapalakas ka ng Panginoon. Tagapin mo ang kalakasan ng Diyos. Magtatagumpay ka. Magpapatuloy ka. Ang kahinaan mo ay papalitan ng Diyos ng kalakasan. Ang iyong pagdududa ay papalitan ng Diyos ng pananampalataya. At ngayon ay pinapalakas ka at itinitindig, itinatayo ng Panginoon. Tanggapin mo ang kanyang dakilang presensya. Receive the anointing of God in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, at meron ngayon nanonood. Oh, hallelujah. Napakatagal mo ng backslider. Napakatagal mo ng malamig sa iyong pananampalataya. Ngunit umiiyak ka sa iyong pagtulog. You have backslidden for a long time and in your sleep you are crying out to God because you want another chance. And the Lord is saying unto you, My child, I am giving you your second chance. Receive my restoration. I am healing you, saith the Lord. I am restoring you, saith God. I am touching you by my power. And I am restoring you, saith the Lord. Receive the restoration of God. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Yes, O oh Lord God. Help each and every one, O oh Lord, to watch and pray. Never falter, never fail. Not even a minute or a second in our lives will we be astray from your will in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us be able to stand firm to the end. Help us be able to stand firm to the end, Lord. Supernaturally strengthen us right now. Help us overcome in the name of Jesus. Yes! We receive, oh God, your supernatural strength. We receive, oh God, your supernatural presence. Fill us, oh God. Fill us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And even right now, whoever is being 
oppressed by the devil, by infirmity, by sickness, by disease. The Lord is just touching you by His supernatural power and anointing that He is healing you. Completely, totally, absolutely receive the miracle of God, the healing touch of God. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, just receive it in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, O Lord, the Lord is healing kidney diseases, liver diseases. The Lord is healing brain tumor right now. The Lord is just melting that tumor in your brain in the name of Jesus. Just receive their healing. Even right now, the Lord is strengthening muscles and bones in your bodies. From the top of your heads to the soles of your feet, the Lord is just restoring your muscles. Every nerve of your body is being restored by the Lord. Receive the miracles in Jesus' name. Shandala Maka. Whatever kind of sickness and disease that I have not mentioned, the Lord is willing and able to heal you and touch you. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. The Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And somebody is watching right now. You are telling yourself, Lord, can I finish my calling? Matatapos ko ba ang tawag ko, Panginoon? Alam ko, tinawag mo ako, pero nawala ako. Nanlamig ako. Kaya mo ba akong ibalik, Panginoon? Ito ang sabi sa iyo ng Panginoon. Anak, ibinabalik na kita ngayon. Itinataas kita at pinapatatag ang sabi ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo ang isang bagong simula. The Lord is just restoring you right now with His mighty grace and power. Just receive in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He who will stand firm to the end will be saved. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, O oh God. Yes, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Just minister to your people, O oh God. Just minister to your church. Sometimes, O oh God, as we wait for the fulfillment of your promises and prophecies, we fail, we falter, we doubt, we become weak, we are discouraged. But thank you. Today, you are putting out your grace. You are putting out your mercy. You are putting out your strength. You are putting out your very presence that will sustain us to the end. Yes, just receive everything that you need from God. Yes, strength, power, love, peace, joy, healing, miracles, financial blessings, prosperity. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Ano man ang kailangan mo sa Diyos? Tanggapin mo ngayon sa pangalan ni Jesus. Pasalamatan mo ang Diyos. Gumagawa siya at gumawa na ng Himala. Tinugon ka niya. Yes! Yes! Hallelujah! The Lord is telling us right now, I will come again to redeem you. But in the meantime, I am here to strengthen you. I am here to sustain you. I am here to give you my grace and strength and love and power and miracles, saith God, that you may be able to stand firm 
to the end. Hallelujah. And you will not be deceived. You will not go astray. You will not go anywhere, saith God. For I am holding you in the palm of my hand. And I will carry you through. I will sustain you. And I will protect you, saith God. Iingatan kita. Patuloy na mamahalin, palalakasin ang sabi ng Diyos. At walang sino man ang makaka ha, makaka kanti sa iyong sabi ng Diyos sapagkat ako mag-iingat sa iyong sabi ng Panginoon. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Just bless the Lord. Just worship Him. Praise Him. And continue to thank Him for He has granted the desires of your heart, the prayers of your heart today. He has restored you, assured you, and has given you eternal life and your salvation for eternity. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. Yes, Jesus. And yes, oh God, we pray for our nation. We pray for the salvation of our fellow Filipinos, oh Lord. Let them come to you and know you and acknowledge you as their Lord God and Savior. Even our families, Lord. Ang aming mga mahal sa buhay, Ama, tinataas namin sila sa inyo. Iligtas mo sila. Bigay mo, Panginoon, ang kaligtasan na aming Panginoong Heso Kristo sa kanilang mga buhay. Tulungan mo silang makilala ka bilang kanilang Diyos personal na tagapagligtas. Come on, say the name of your loved ones, pray for them, intercede for them, that they may be able to receive the salvation and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. That in the end, makakasama mo sila sa pagsamba, sa paglilingkod, at pag-ibig sa Diyos na buhay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, so Lord God. Today, O oh Lord, hallelujah, you have reminded us to watch and pray and be careful. And I pray, Lord, that those truths, those messages, those revelations will be something that will guide us through, that will keep us faithful, that will keep us firm and strong until you come again. Because truly, we will have a lot of trials, challenges, and battles in life but you have promised that you will keep us strong to the end. And we thank you because it is your spirit, it is your power and anointing that will save us to the end. Pasalamatan po natin ang Panginoon. Ano man ang hindi po nabanggit ng inyong lingkod na nais niyong makuha sa Panginoon, yes, He is willing and able to touch you and answer you. So sabihin mo sa Panginoon at pasalamatan mo na siya sapagkat magaling ka na, pinagpala ka na, pinalakas ka na, at patuloy ka niyang isusustain kasama ang iyong mga mahal sa buhay hanggang sa huli. Walang mawawala, magiging tapat ang bawat isa. Salamat po, Panginoon. Salamat po sa mga babae at lalaking ito. Sapagkat, Lord, Maraming pinagdaanan at maraming pinagdadaanan ngunit nananatili sapagkat pinangahawakan ang pangako mo. Salamat Panginoon sapagkat hindi mo sila hayaang mawala at hindi mo kami hayaang mawala. Kapit bisig sama-sama po kami maglilingkod hanggang wakas. Hanggang wakas. Selyuhan mo po ang aming kaligtasan, ang aming pag-ibig sa iyo. Wala pong manlalamig. Wala pong mawawala. Sama-sama ka po namin paglilingkuran, mamahalin, iibigin. 
sasambahin hanggang wakas. Salamat po sa pagpapanatili. Salamat po sa iyong kabiga, ka, kalakasan. Salamat po sa iyong pag-ibig. Salamat po sa iyong presensya. Pinabalik po namin ang lahat ng kapurihan, kaluwalat at karangalan sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Isa muna pong malakas na palakpak para sa atin, Diyos. Praise God. Napakaganda ng kanyang mensahe. At muli, ipinadama niya sa atin ng kanyang pagmamahal. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. At ngayon po ay dadako tayo sa ating offering. Amen. At hindi po ito bago. Matagal na po natin ginagawa ito. Amen po. Sa so, maaring alam na po natin ang mga verses na sinishare natin. But samahan niyo po ako ngayon sa Lucas 6, 38. Amen? Magbigay kayo at bibigyan kayo ng Diyos. Magbigay kayo at bibigyan kayo ng Diyos. Hustong takal, siksikliglig at umaapaw pa ang ibibigay sa inyo. Sapagkat ang takalang ginagamit ninyo sa iba ay siya rin gagamitin ng Diyos sa inyo. Amen. Maliwanag po ba? Magbigay kayo at bibigyan kayo ng Diyos. Ano ang ipinabibigay sa atin ng Lord? Malakay 3, 8 to 12. Ang atin pong tithes and offering, ang buong tithes and offering ay ipinabibigay po, hinihingi ng Diyos sa atin, sa bawat isa sa atin. Salamat sa Panginoon sapagkat tinuturuan tayo ng katotohanan. Amen? At kahit pa ulit-ulit tayong uh, nating binabasa ang mga verses ng kanyang mga salita, patuloy tayong natututo. Amen po? Ang sabi dito, magbigay kayo at bibigyan kayo ng Diyos. Amen. So alam nyo po mga kapatid, sa satanang buhay ko, simula pa nung nakarating ako sa iglesyang ito at natuto ako ng tithes and offering, salamat sa Panginoon kasi alam nyo po, ito yung nakasaksak sa isip ko. Sino magbibigay sa akin? Ang Diyos ang magbibigay sa akin. Ang Diyos ang magbibigay sa atin. Sa totoo po, hindi po talaga ako umaasa sa sarili ko, hindi ako umaasa sa asawa ko o kung sino pa mang tao. Sa Lord, lang, sa Lord lang po talaga ako umaasa. At kung bakit patuloy po tayong nagbibigay, kasi para tayo managana, amen? Sino po bang may ibig na mahirap ang buhay natin? Lahat tayo gusto natin masagana ang buhay natin, amen? So kung gusto natin tayo bigyan ng Lord, kung gusto natin managana ang buhay natin, ibigay po natin ang ating tithes and offering. Gawin natin ang Malakay 3, 8 to 12. Amen? Ipinangako ng Diyos kung buo natin ibibigay ang ating ikapu at handog, eto rin, ibubuhos niya. Bubuksan niya ang mga durungawa ng langit. At ibubuhos niya sa atin ang masaganang pagpapala na walang sukat din na kalagyan. Amen? Ang sabi rin dito, hustong takal, siksik, liglig at umaapo pa ang ibibigay sa atin ng Lord. Amen? mahahadlangan pa po ba tayo para i-withhold natin ng ating tithes and offering? Kung ang nangangako sa atin ay ang Diyos, who created us, who created the heavens and the earth, na walang hindi magagawa ang Diyos, amen, para sa atin, ayun lang ikapot handog natin ang hinihingi niya, amen po ba? Maliit na bagay. Pero, <laughs> ang Diyos po ang tutulong sa atin na maibigay natin ang lahat ng ito. Amen? At sabi, nagbibigay tayo ng ating tithes and offering kasi mahal po natin ng Lord. Amen? Para sa kanyang iglesia, para matugunan ang lahat ng needs ng kanyang iglesia. Amen? Para matugunan ang mga bayarin ng kanyang iglesia. Amen? At ano po ang sabi ng Colossians, 
Colossus 3.23 Ano man ang inyong ginagawa, gawin ninyo ng magaan sa kalooban na walang... Ano man ang inyong ginagawa, gawin ninyo ng magaan sa kalooban na waring hindi sa tao kayo naglilingkod, kundi sa Panginoon. So, maliwanag, lalo na nga po kung dito sa iglesia natin gagawin ng mabubuting bagay. Amen? Gawin natin ito para sa Diyos. Ibigay natin ang ating tithes and offering, ang ating support sa man and woman of God, ang ating support sa, sa lahat ng ministry, sa radio, sa TV. Ibigay natin ang ating suporta sa lahat ng needs ng iglesia. Kasi, ginagawa natin ito para sa Diyos. Amen po. Kung bakit tayo sumasamba, kung bakit tayo dumadalo, lahat ng ito para sa Diyos. Amen? At sa kabilang banda, tayo po ang nakikinabang, tayo po ang pinapagpala ng Lord. Amen? Kung susundin natin ang mga pinapagawa ng Lord sa atin, ang ating pagbibigay ng ikapot handog, tayo po ang mananagana. Tayo po ang sasarap ang buhay. Amen? So walang dahilan, walang dahilan para hindi po tayo magbigay ng ating ikapo at handog. At ano po ang sabi ng, ng Hebreo 6.9? Hebreo 6.9 Makatarungan ang Diyos, hindi niya lilimutin ang inyong ginawa at ang pag-ibig na inyong ipinakita at hanggang ngayon ipinakikita sa paglilingkod ninyo sa inyong mga kapwa kristyano. Amen? So maliwanag po, ano man ang ating ibinibigay, ano man ang ating ginagawa sa iglesyang ito, ang Diyos po ang nakakaalam at siya po ay makatarungan. Hindi niya po hahayaan na mawalang kabuluhan ng ating hirap, pagod o ano mang ibinigay natin. Amen? Ibabalik niya sa atin, hustong takal, siksik, ligat, umaapaw pa. Amen po? More blessings, more promotions, yan po ang pangako ng Lord sa atin. Alam niyo, Kinompute ko kanina yung mga prophecies pa. 139 prophecies pa ang hindi pa natutupad, hindi pa nangyayari. So, kokonti na lang mga kapatid, nasa end times na tayo. Salamat sa Panginoon kasi may mga totoong lingkod ng Diyos na nagtuturo sa atin ito. Amen? Hindi tayo natatakot bagkus tayo ay naliliwanagan. Bagkus tayo ay natututo. Amen? Salamat sa Panginoon kasi ang mga lingkod ng Diyos ay patuloy na nangangaral saan man sila makarating. Amen? Malayo man sila sa kanilang pamilya, dalhin man nila ang kanilang anak, ang kanilang apo, makapaglingkod lamang sa Diyos, makapagling, makapagligtas lamang ng kaluluwa. Amen? So mga kapatid, ang ating tithes and offering, yan po ang key, yan po ang dahilan kung bakit po tayo ay pasasaganain ng Panginoon. So, magbigay tayo ng ating ikapu at handog at bibigyan tayo ng Diyos. Alam nyo mga kapatid, ishare ko lamang sa inyo yung buhay ko. <laughs> Alam nyo, ano eh, um, wala talaga akong inaasahan kundi si Lord eh. Kaya nakakaiyak. I mean, nakakatuwa, sa i- nakaka- naiiyak ako sa tuwa kasi napakabuti ng Diyos sa buhay ko eh. Alam nyo, During pandemic, nag-enroll ang anak ko sa may tuition fee na university. Salamat sa Panginoon, nakakapagbayad ako ng tuition fee. Nakakapagpatuloy ang aming negosyo. Nababayaran ng mga bayarin. Nabubuhay kami na sagana sa pagkain. Di po ba kabutihan ng Diyos yun? Hindi kami nagkakasakit. Bagamat nararanasan ko minsan na nagkaroon ng konting karamdaman, pero alam ko, iniingatan ako ng Lord eh. Alam nyo po, kinuha ko yung, yung niluto kong Bicol Express sa, sa lutuan, punong-puno. Alam nyo po bang natapon sa kamay ko ng super init yung mga Bicol Express na yun? Naibaba ko yun. Pero alam nyo po ang ginawa ko, pinagpray ko po yung kamay ko eh. Una, binabad ko muna siya sa alam kong dapat pagbabaran sa suka. Pero alam nyo po, habang yung no araw na yon Talagang masakit yung kamay ko. Hindi ko hindi ko siya hindi ayaw niya na ma, mainitan pa siya sapagkat napaso na siya kanina eh. Hindi siya na ano, tingnan mo, ang dami kong ang sakit nito pero wala akong paltos diyan. Ito lang konting sugat pero magaling na. 
Yun po yung sinasabi ko. Yung napakabuti ng Diyos sa buhay ko. Amen. Alam niyo po, ako minsan malamang iniisip na ng mga suki ko. May COVID na ako. Kasi parang nasusuka na ako. Ganyan. Pero alam niyo po, sa totoo lang, ang Lord lang talaga ang gumagamot sa sarili ko. Eh. Wala akong kakampi si Lord lang. Siya ang manggagamot ko. Siya ang nagbibigay sa akin ng financial needs ko, ng pamilya ko. Kaya... Napakabuti ng Panginoon. Sundin po natin ang Malakay 3, 8 to 12. Ang protection at ang provision ng Lord ay, ay sa sa atin po. Amen? So maraming maraming salamat sa Panginoon. Magbigay po tayo ng ikapu at handog at ang Diyos po ang magbibigay sa atin. Huwag po tayo umasa sa tao. Bibiguin lang po niyan. Pero si Lord, hindi po tayo bibiguin. Amen? Basta willing lang po tayong sumunod, sumunod sa Kanya at gawin ng Kanyang kalooban. Amen? Ibigay natin ang tithes and offering at huwag po natin kakalimutan ng ating ang ating mga suporta sa man and woman of God. Sa mga lingkod ng Diyos. Ang tuition fee ni Josh, ipinrovide ng ni Lord yan. At ang mga tuition fee pa ng mga kapatira, ng mga estudyante, ipinrovide na ni Lord yan. So, thank you Lord dahil ipinrovide mo na ang lahat ng needs namin. So, wala pong dahilan para hindi po tayo maging kabahagi ang lahat ng mga nakikinig, nanonood. Dalangin ko, mga kapatid, na naintindihan nyo na at naunawaan at magpatuloy tayo sa katotohanan, mabuhay tayo sa katotohanan, ayon sa salita ng Diyos, sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Nais po ng Lord na ibigay mo ngayon tithes and offerings sa Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship. Napakadali pong isend, may Gcash po. At kung kayo po ay nag-subscribe na at nag-share na ng, ng mga live streaming na to, makikita nyo po eh kung, saan nyo, kung sino yung mga contacts. Amen? Kung saan kayo magpapadala, kung anong bank, kayo, kung anong bank account, madali na pong malaman. PM us through our Facebook account. At maraming maraming salamat sa Panginoon sapagkat hindi po niya ang maraming tao upang maging kabahagi ng iglesia ito. Amen po! Huwag po natin kakalimutan ang ating love gift sa man and woman of God. Sa kabila ng tayo nagbibigay ng ating ikaputhandog, lahat po ng mga pangangailangan, sacrificial giving man yan, ibigay po natin ito. Alam po natin na yung ating ingat yaman ay namumuroblema na. Amen! So, marahil naiisip niya na marami pa siyang bayarin pero yung hawak niyang pera. Pero si Lord talaga ang magpaparami nun. Amen? Through us, magbibigay sa pamamagitan ng ating tithes and offering at ng ating mga, uh, ikap, ng mga hinihingi pa ng Lord sa atin, malaki man yan o hindi, hindi naman hihingi ng Lord ang wala tayo eh. Hinihingi ng Lord ko ano yung meron tayo. So, ibigay po nating lahat yan sa Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship. Amen po. So atin pong ipanalangin ng ating mga ipin, ibinigay sa iglesyang ito. Hallelujah. Tayong lahat po ay dumulog sa Panginoon. Lord, Father God, maraming 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 salamat sa kabutihan mo sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat o Diyos sa walang hanggang biyaya mong ipinagkakaloob sa amin. Tunay nga, Lord God, kung kami, kami lamang ay magtitiwala na ibibigay namin sa iyo ang aming ikapot handog. Ikaw rin ang magbabalik nito sa amin. Ikaw ang magpuprovide ng lahat ng aming pangangailangan, O God. Hallelujah. Purihin ka, Panginoon. At pinatutunayan mo po yan. Pinapadama mo po yan sa amin sa araw-araw ng buhay namin. Salamat ng marami, Panginoon. At patuloy nga, Panginoon, na dalangin ko na ang bawat isa, anuman ang kalagayan, Panginoon, ay huwag silang mag-alinlangan. Huwag silang mag-doubt. Kahit nakikita nila na yun na lamang ang kanilang Hawak, Panginoon, maniwala sila, Panginoon, na Ikaw ang aming mapaghimalang Diyos, na walang hindi kayang gawin, Panginoon, para kami ipagpalain. Lord, patuloy mong palakasin ang aming mga espiritu, ang aming isip, ang aming puso, upang gawin namin ng kalooban mo sa araw-araw, Panginoon. Patuloy mo, Lord, hawakan, Panginoon, ng mahigpit ang aming, ang aming mga kamay upang, hindi, upang gawin namin, Panginoon, ang mga bagay, na nais mong gawin namin para sa iyo, para sa aming pamilya, para sa iglesia ng ito, O oh God. Lord, wala po talaga kaming inaasahan sa buhay namin ito kung hindi ikaw lamang, Panginoon. Patuloy, Lord, na ang aming puso't isip ay nakatuon lamang sa iyo. Ano mang dami ng aming due dates, ng aming mga bayarin, Lord, ikaw ang magpuprovide nito sa pag-aaral ng mga estudyante, Lord. 
Ikaw magbibigay ng mga pang tuition fee, pambili ng lahat ng kanilang mga needs, Lord. Ikaw po ang magbibigay. Kaya nga, Panginoon, patuloy mong hayaang ang aming mga buhay ay nananatili lamang na umaasa sa iyo, nananatili lamang na nagtitiwala sa iyo, Panginoon. At Lord, patuloy nga, Panginoon, na dalangin ko na paramihin mo pa, Panginoon, ang mga pagpapalang tinatamasan ng bawat isa. Paramihin mo pa ang perang hawak, Panginoon, ng iglesia ng ito upang matugunan, Panginoon, ang lahat ng bayarin, ang lahat ng pangangailangan, Panginoon, at Patuloy, Lord, na maabot pa ang mga kaluluwang hindi paligtas sa mga oras na ito, God. Lord, maraming 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 salamat sa iyo. Sa iyo po namin, ipinagkakatiwala ang lahat. Sa iyo po namin, ibinabalik ang lahat ng papuri, pasasalamat at pagluwalhati sa aming Panginoon na si Jesus. Amen at Amen. Praise God. Sige po tayo pong lahat ay tumayo na po sa ating mga kinaupuan at wago po tayo dumako sa ating pangwakas sa panalangin. Tayo po muna ay umawit sa Panginoon. Hallelujah! Huy! Idiklara po natin ang katagumpayan ng ating gawain sa oras at sa araw na ito. Amen po ba? We are a conqueror and we are more than victorious. So we will rejoice in your name, Lord! Gonna dance and praise Him It doesn't matter what comes my way The greater one lives inside of me His name is Jesus I'm born a winner More than victorious I'm a heir of His kingdom Filled with the Holy Ghost It doesn't matter what comes my way The greater one lives inside of me His name is Jesus I'm born a winner More than victorious I'm a heir of His kingdom Filled with the Holy Ghost I rejoice in Him I rejoice
Sige po, tayo po ay dumako sa ating pangwakas na panalangin. Tayo pong lahat ay umukot po mikit. Panginoon, salamat po Diyos sa, hap, sa araw na to at binigyan mo muli kami ng katagumpayan. Lord, ang gawain to ay tunay nga na pinilit tinawag mo upang ikaw ay ihayag. Salamat Panginoon sa bawat nakikinig at nanonood na inabot mo na yung dakilang salita. Silang mga nangangailangan ng kaligtasan, ng himala, ng pagpapala, kasaganaan, katagumpayan ay ibinigay at ipinagkaloob mo. Panginoon, maging ang mga nasa lugar na to ay patuloy mong binigyan o Diyos ng katagumpayan at kasagutan sa aming mga panalangin, Panginoon. Lord, salamat dahil Ikaw ang siyang nagbigay ng dakilang uh, araw na to na muli Ikaw ay aming mapasalamatan. Kaya nga naman sa aming paghiwahiwalay, ingatan mo ang bawat isa na makarating, Panginoon, sa pansamantalang tahanan at madat na ng mga mahal sa buhay na may mga ngiti sa labi. At ang kagalakan, Panginoon, na aming naranasan sa lugar na to ay patuloy na may maibahagi sa kanila. Lord, salamat. Salamat muli sa araw na to at ang uh, katagumpayan, Panginoon, ang siyang ipinagkaloob mo sa amin. Sa mga nanonood, sa mga nakikinig, tunay nga na naranasan nila ito ang dakilang bagay at maging ang iyong lingkod na ginamit, Panginoon, pagpalain mo ang kanyang buhay, ibalik mo ng higit siksik liglig o maapaw, Panginoon, ang kasaganaan sa kanilang mga buhay. Muli sa iyo namin inaalay ang lahat ng katagumpa- katagumpayan sa pangalan na aming Panginoong Yeso Kristo at ang bawat isa ay magsabi ng Amen.